Good morning, Washington. How you doing, everybody? This is Big Dave on Dave TV here on DCRTV.com. It's Sunday. Sunday, Sunday at the Echo Driveway. <laughs> those are from my those are my Philadelphia kid days when I was growing up in the Philadelphia area. There was always uh, ads on the radio, WFIL and WIBG for the Echo Driveway. I guess somewhere down there in Atlantic County, New Jersey, kind of out in the Pine Barrens. The Echo Driveway. There'll be Speeder and his limo. Anyhow, be there. Be there. <coughs> oh. Well, anyhow, the big news. What's the big news? The big news, we're hearing a lot of rumblings uh, over the weekend about WMAL. Um, apparently, a lot of stuff went down on Friday. Uh, somebody left a memo somewhere that got uh, picked up by the staff at, uh, at the Cumulus, formerly Citadel headquarters there on Jennifer Street in Washington. And uh, it, it detailed plans to flip... Uh, 1059 to a WMAO relay come Monday. And apparently, uh, the higher ups there who work at uh, 1059 didn't know about this specific order. So it was going to be done like totally in secret. And apparently, uh, so my reliable sources say that come Monday, sometime in the mid morning or sometime during the day, the station will flip over to a WMAO relay. And goodbye, the edge. Mike O'Mara, Kirk McHugh, and Susie Ancilio, Surf Callwell. You know, um, that's what we're hearing. Now, if it doesn't happen, don't blame me. I'm just the piano player. <laughs> if it doesn't happen, you know, maybe they said, well, since DCRTV Dave is reporting it, we're going to stick it to him, and we're not going to make the change till Tuesday. So anyhow, apparently Mike O'Mara was at a uh, Big Owen Dukes uh, festival there at the State Theater in Falls Church on uh, Friday night, and apparently he was really ragging on 105.9 and uh, confirmed to a large section of the audience that he had been fired. So uh, it looks like, it looks pretty good. I'd say 92.7% chance on Monday that WMAL will start to be heard on 105.9 in addition to 6.30. I think that's a good move for the station because their primary competition are other talkers in the market, primarily WTOP and WAMU. Both of those stations are FM only, you know, great signals. You know, TOP has three signals. You know, they have that big 103.5 signal that covers the metro. They have 103.9 up in Frederick and 107.7 down in Manassas, Warrington. So they have a huge coverage area, regionally speaking. And WAMU 88.5, which is, you know, NPR lefty talk, uh, as some like to call it, they have a great signal. 88.5 is a killer signal. I mean, it reaches up into Pennsylvania and Central Virginia and parts of the Eastern Shore. And they even have an Eastern Shore station over there on 88.3. So, you know, MAL... Yeah, MAL's daytime signal, 6.30's daytime signal is pretty good. But at night, you know, they have to change the orientation of it. And it's hard to get. When you get into the Virginia suburbs, once you get outside the Beltway, past Rest and out of Fairfax County, people in Loudoun County, Prince William County, Stafford County have a real hard time here in WMAL at night. And that is a core segment of their, you know, right-leaning audience. So 105.9... If and when this all happens on Monday, the addition of 105.9, which is a Virginia signal, it's based out of uh, the Merrifield Tower there on the Beltway, uh, when that happens, it will severely, significantly improve WMAL's signal into Virginia to points west and south, which is a core group of uh, WMAL's audience. So I think, you know, you'll be able to get WMAL down in Fredericksburg really clear, even at night. So uh, I think that's a, uh, a good move for the station. As I've said in my mailbag postings and my commentaries, if WMAL wants to really go for WTOP and WAMU and some of the other talkers in town, they're going to need to do more than just the FM signal. They're going to need to really kick ass when it comes to local programming. You know, WMAL right now is local programming from 5.30 in the morning until noon, and that's it. The rest of the day is all pumped plugged off the satellite, pumped off, pulled off the satellite. So uh, 
you know, I think at the very least, WMAL is going to have to start doing an afternoon, local afternoon drive show. And that means moving Sean Hannity somewhere else. Sean Hannity's ratings haven't been that great. You know, the morning majority gets okay ratings. That's the local show. And Rush always gets good ratings at noon. But, you know, Hannity doesn't, you know, he's like 17th, 18th place many, many weeks. So, uh, you know, they're going to have to move him. And, you know, some people are going to scream at that. But I think Hannity is already overexposed on Fox. Move Hannity to the evenings. Put him after 11 at uh, you know, eight or nine o'clock or something like that, and then, you know, put together a really cool afternoon show. Now, the other thing MAL, I think, is going to have to do is watch it a little bit when it comes to its its talk. You know, uh, it's, it's nothing wrong with leaning to the right, but I think that uh, they're going to need to also, you know, be a little more civil in their discussion, and I think they're going to need to mix it up more with uh, some more people of diverse opinions, you know, a little more of a liberal or lefty view in there. doesn't mean the shows have to lean solidly left, but I think they need to have more of a diversity in, the, in their talk format. So I think if they do that, and if they bolster their news department, you know, one of the things WTOP has done really well is news, 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 you know, and if, and, and you know, while MAL won't be an all newser, I don't think, uh, they need to uh, really bolster that news department and, you know, top of the hour, bottom of the hour newscasts, you know, and, and, and not farm out their overnight and uh, weekend newscasts to Metro. So we shall see. But, you know, it's a, it's a step toward in the right direction whether the new cumulus owners of WMAL will continue building this great once great station back to a great station. We shall see. <laughs> All right. I love the Post. I love the Washington. Well, I love the Washington Post. I really do. You know, more corrections here. This is Saturday's paper. You know, you got to wonder, because of a production area, because of a production error, they, they get they get a correction wrong. A correction because of a production error, a correction that appeared September sixteenth was incomplete in some editions. It should have read a February thirteenth business article about Gordon Smith, president of the National Association of Broadcasters, incorrectly said that he was fifty five years old. Smith was fifty eight at the time and is now fifty nine. Now, first of all. To get around to running a correction to a February 13th article on September 16th is kind of lame. And to get somebody's age wrong is kind of lame. And then to get your correction wrong, the September correction wrong was lame. <laughs> Man, it's just a comedy of errors. And another funny thing, Mike, a Mike Wise column in the September 9 sports section about two coaches who almost flew on planes that were hijacked on September 11th. 2001, and correctly said that former Georgetown basketball coach John Thompson Jr. lived in Arlington when he actually lived in Alexandria at the time. Okay, you know. Mike, Mike, Mike. You know, Mike, I like Mike. I like Mike. He's a little bit of a creepy guy. He has a certain creepiness about him. And I'm, I'm not sure he's great for the radio. I don't know. His radio show, I listen to it. Sometimes I go, you know, here's a 40-some-year-old guy trying to pretend he's 22. You know, he, ju he just seems like he's trying to be more juvenile than his age suggests and it doesn't come off real well another funny thing yeah i don't know you know little more little mistakes here's the washington post to get in their real estate section and they give you the they give you the uh, real estate trends and they color code all the zip codes as according to the ups or downs in the market and of course my zip code is 20191 which is right here reston and they have it colored gray which means there was a three percent or more Median change in the house price. Well, if you look at the, the table here for 20191, there was a 1%. So they got it wrong. Okay. More mistakes. More stupid mistakes. It's like nobody bothers to read this paper. It's just full of, it's just literally loaded with stupid errors almost every day. Ah! <laughs> Tip of the old camo cap, which I have in my pocket here today. As you notice, by the way, I'm not wearing camo pants today. Isn't that something? I'm actually uh, figuring, you know, hey, these are still cargo pants with lots of pockets in them so I can stuff them full of all my uh, in sundry items, cell phone, wallet, uh, weapons. <laughs> but I'm not wearing camo pants today. But I do have my camo cap. Tip of the old camo cap to uh, Mac McGarry, a great guy, a DC broadcasting legend. Uh, Mac uh, was supposed to uh, start his 51st season of its academic on Sunday, but he's been sidelined with a really nasty sinus infection. He's 85 years old, and we you know, hope he gets well and is back on its academic. But for the first few episodes of the season, 
over there at Channel 4 WRC, Hillary Howard will step in. Hillary is the afternoon uh, uh, afternoon uh, drive, uh, one of the afternoon drive hosts on WTOP radio. And she's a Washington uh, radio TV veteran. She's worked all over the place in radio and television and all that. And remember she had brain tumor surgery. She had a, she had a, I forget what they call it, a mangioma or something, whatever they call it up there. She had that removed over Johns Hopkins back in April and is doing great. So uh, tip of the camo cap to both Mac and Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks. So uh, any other big news going on today? Yeah, another interesting story. Nassau Broadcasting. Nassau Broadcasting Partners is facing involuntary bankruptcy. Apparently the company, the radio company owes 80 $3.8 million, and two of its major creditors, Goldman Sachs and Fortress Credit, lent their money, and they're not apparently fired a, filed a Chapter 7 petition in U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Wilmington to, uh, to you know, force the company into bankruptcy. Um, NASA owns a lot of stations in the Northeast throughout New Jersey, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. There's two local stations that they own. They own uh, WAFYQ 103.1 in Frederick, and they also own Classic Rock WWEG The Eagle 106.9 in Hagerstown. So uh, I would imagine NASA is going to have to start selling some of its radio properties to uh, satisfy the bankruptcy court. So uh, we're going to see something going on there, I'm sure. All right, folks. Uh, that's, that's Dave TV for today. Sunday. Uh, stay tuned. I will be listening tomorrow morning to see if 105.9 does start broadcasting MAL. And uh, if you're going to you know, listen to The Edge today, it might be the last day you'll hear that wonderful Alice Cooper uh, foreigner classic rock. Huh? Have a good one, and uh, don't forget to stay tuned and cut 105.9.